Uh, hi. Um, my name's Martin, and uh, I'm, a, I'm a marine scientist, uh, fisheries manager, marine park manager. And I'm going to tell you a little story about uh, me, an old fisherman, and a pile of fish. Um, so back many years ago, about 1997, I was, uh, I was actually a few years out of university and bright-eyed, bushy-tailed, I had things to do, um, working in a marine protected area environment. And I was meeting fishermen and we were developing management arrangements and, and all this information was coming in. And I met a guy called Lyle, an old guy, an old fisherman. Um, he was one of many. Um, but he, he's a guy with a, a grey beard and he's a stocky character, you know, he's high but he's, he's pretty, pretty fit, you know, head of grey hair and very weathered. And uh, I remember him talking to me and telling me stories and as he's telling me these stories and, and his passions about marine life and fishing, um, I noticed, you know, on his arms he had uh, scars from fishing, so big scar here from being caught up in a fishing line catching a fish and you know, hook marks and spines from fish in his hands. So he's, he's a pretty, pretty burly guy. And as he's telling me these stories, he's trying to tell me about um, needing to protect an area that's important to him that he'd fished. And um, it was, I was beginning to realise after listening to him that actually this guy's got a lot of passion and understanding. Um, he's telling me that you know, from a, from a child, he'd go fishing. He was always out in the water. He'd actually go fishing, spear fishing with a mate instead of going to school. Um, all his life catching fish, spear fishing, um, and diving. And we connected there because I dive, I fish as well, um, so interested in marine life. Um, he knew a lot of information about under the sea. And a lot of fishermen don't go under the water because they stay on top of the water and catch fish. But no, he knew what was going on. So I was getting this real interesting um, feeling about him. And he said, I've got a couple of sites um, that I want to take you to. The, the, these are special sites where fish are aggregating to spawn. And they only aggregate on a certain moon phase at a certain area. I said, OK. So he took me out to the site. Um, and this is in October. And we had to leave in the afternoon, so we had to dive the site in the late afternoon because these fish are aggregating the spawn at dusk. It took us about three hours to get out to the site. Um, there's a fair current running over the area, and which makes it difficult to dive. Um, and the visibility in the water is a bit low. It's a bit eerie because it's late afternoon, and there's no one else out there because people don't tend to dive that time of the day. It took me down to the site. Um, we were diving over the coral, getting deeper and deeper down a slope and there's sea whips um, and sea fans, like Gorgonian fans, and then it just started to appear. That I started realising what he was telling me about. Well, there was all these fish. These fish were aggregating to spawn, and these fish are about that size. In an area less than the size of this room, there was about 100 of them, which doesn't sound like many fish, but normally on a, you, you might see a handful of these fish just hanging around. But these fish were, were displaying these courtship behaviours and Lyle was off swimming in front of me, and I forgot to say, he wears a red wetsuit. Um, from head to toe, he covers himself in red, um, because he thinks that red is a colour that sharks don't like. So you've got this grey-haired guy in the water with red wetsuit. Anyway, he swims off and into the distance. I couldn't keep up with him, he was swimming so fast. This is an old guy. And he's arm, waving his arms around and pointing, and I realised he was trying to tell me um, what was happening. And, and this meant that that's a shimmy shammy that fish are actually going up against each other and, and courting. And this meant not to go to the surface, but this meant they're spawning. That's a spawning event. And before I knew it, these fish are spawning around us, and I was hooked. I was like, wow, this is incredible. And, I, and after that, I, I decided that, well, we need to do something about this because he wanted that site protected. Over the next few years, we monitored the site, and in 2004, um, during the rezoning of the Great Barrier Reef Marine Park, we managed to get um, one of his sites, the main site, protected um, completely from fishing. Unfortunately, another site that he showed me um, was remained open to fishing, but that actually was fortunate because it gave us two sites, one that was fished and one was close to fishing, so we compare the number of fish that were aggregating. 
A few years later, you know, we were diving it every year. At the same time, every year, on the new moon, um, we had over 300 fish on that site. So the numbers increased. So it was, it was working, this management arrangement. Um, after meeting Lyle and during that time, I, I became more involved in this and um, involved in setting up an organisation called Science and Conservation of Fish Aggregations, SURFA. I'm now the CEO of that. And we have projects all over the world, um, like Fiji, Palau and the Caribbean, working on trying to get these special places that where fish spawn into protection and, and trying to monitor them and get the information that we need to, to do it. And, um, and I, I talk regularly with Lyle. Um, he still works in his family business. Um, he, he, he's passionate. He wants more protection of certain things. Um, you know, coming from a fisherman that used to fish a lot, and he, he, and he changed. He, he he's wants to protect these fish rather than let it keep and continue to be exploited. Um, he doesn't dive anymore. Uh, he comes out in the boat with us when we go to the dive the, the site. Uh, it's actually his boat that he provides. Um, He's not allowed to dive, he's a bit old, you know, battle-worn, and uh, he says, oh, no, I'm not, not old at all, just got a sore back today. But he tries to come out with us, and uh, I, my, my uh, career or my life changed by meeting Lyle and, and now I'm working more in this field, and I don't think he realises um, how much change that he's created or impact that he's had both locally and also globally in getting this issue um, looked after so I'm, I'm, I'm very happy to have met Lyle the old fisherman. Thank you.